Hi, I'm Brent Kelly with the StokerCon 17 Video Squad, and tonight I'm talking with lawyer, former Air Force Special Agent, and award-winning author of Damnable Diabolical, The Angel of the Abyss, as well as the uh, dark fantasy and horror noir collection, American Nocturne, Hank Schwabel. Thanks for being with us tonight, Hank. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. So you were teaching a course at Horror University at StokerCon called Saying More With Less. Would you care to tell us a little about that? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm excited to do that. I, uh, I love teaching about uh, you know, our beloved uh, avocation. Uh, my class, uh, this workshop I'm doing, is going to focus on techniques uh, for tightening prose and why that's so important and how those techniques uh, and uh, the ideas behind them uh, it, uh, can be incorporated into every aspect of your storytelling and uh, trying to give it kind of a unified theory for people to think about while they're writing and most importantly while they're revising and editing uh, so that they can uh, you know, not only make the actual prose itself tight but have it reflect the kind of tension and kinetic energy you want in a story to propel the reader through it. When I was younger, I was uh, definitely, first and foremost, influenced by Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, while Edgar Allan Poe was writing in the 19th century, some of his prose is incredibly modern, certainly for the era. Uh, and he had the ability to take a story and force it through a tight space and that's what tightness of writing does and that increases the pressure uh and uh, flannery o'connor took that same tightness and you know instead of a garden hose she put her thumb over the end with uh, a story called a good man is hard to find i thought and that really impressed me just how tight that that story was in both the, the story itself and in the way it was expressed in the writing uh other writers um that uh, i think have influenced me in the prose you know that, certainly Stephen King has influenced all of us when it comes to you know how we think of horror and you know the, the kinds of stories that that uh, you know, our imagination conjures up it's almost impossible to live in my era without being influenced by someone like him and and Clive Barker uh, Dean Koontz you know other authors like that but when it comes to just style when it comes to the actual prose itself uh, I would have to say uh, certainly Hemingway was a big influence because he was the granddaddy of, of what I think is the modern voice that is uh, it, it really reflects the professional type of uh, writing that I like to see um, uh, um, more recent authors uh, I like Dennis Lehane a lot I like uh, Lee Child um, uh, Sarah Gran has that kind of a firm grasp of this way to really make that prose click without, with an economy and an efficiency uh, that that just gets into your skull a little bit because there is no time for you to break away from the immersion because she is never giving you a spare word <laughs> in there that, that is making your mind wander. She is controlling that story, and I love it. I'm going to try to make it worth everybody's while. Uh, you know, people are dedicating a couple hours of their life to it, and I understand that, plus their hard-earned money. So I'm going to try to make sure everybody who comes uh, gets something. Uh, some piece of uh, fiction, uh, you know, to take home with them so that uh, you know, they have something to walk away with. Um, plus, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to leave anything off the table, I should say, you know, instead of on the table. It's all going to be on the table for everybody. I'm not going to hold back. I think a lot of writers, uh, and I'm not accusing anybody, but things I've been to, I can just tell a lot of writers, they keep the good stuff in the back. You know, <laughs> they, they oh. don't, don't break out the good bottles, you know, for just anybody. And I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm going to tell everybody exactly what my techniques are, my, what my approach is, how I revise things, what I think is the difference between making something a good sentence and a bad versus a bad sentence, or more importantly, sometimes a good certain sentence versus an awesome sentence. And uh, once you start to understand, it's not just magic. It's not just people... Um, taking a blank page and magically having words appear, which is you know, somewhat of a flip way of saying how a lot of authors have presented it over the years. Um, there is a, there's a, a, a technique to it. There's an approach. There's a discipline. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, an, a, an organizing principle that you can keep in mind while you're writing. And what, more importantly, even while you're revising and editing, uh, that goes way beyond talent 
And by saying, and what I mean, what I mean by that is that it, you don't have to have talent to do this. Uh, talent helps. I mean, let's not deny it. Some people have a way with words, but that's uh, neither a necessary nor a sufficient <laughs> condition to being a good writer. Work is a necessary and a sufficient condition. If you put in enough work, you can do it. But just like digging a hole outside and then uh, refilling it, that's a lot of work, but it doesn't produce much. Uh, you have to know what your goal is and you have to have a good idea of uh, what work counts and what doesn't and uh, what the final product needs to be. And once you do that, uh, I think pretty much anyone with a basic grasp of, uh, of the English language and of grammar uh, can do this. It's, some people are going to have to work at it a little harder than others, but uh, I think I can set a lot of people on a good path. Uh, because this is stuff I've studied a long time and I internalized a lot of this and I enjoy teaching it. So uh, you know, I don't hold myself out as a guru uh, and I certainly will ask people to challenge anything I tell them, but I'm gonna tell them everything I believe uh, within the amount of time we have and I'm not gonna hide any, any of the good stuff. You know, None of the good bottles of scotch are gonna be you know, kept in the back of special guests. I'm glad to hear it. Well. Hank, uh, really appreciate you taking the time and uh, having a chat with me tonight. Take care. We'll see you at StokerCon. Thanks for having me. Look forward to meeting you.